Hello everyone, it's Dr. Daystorms again, and this is the second part of Chapter 7. And in this segment, we're going to discuss ionic size. And so remember, previously we talked about the effect of nuclear charge, which was the apparent pull that the outermost electrons felt from the protons that were inside the nucleus. And so the more electrons you had between on the inside between the nucleus and that valence electrons really affected and decreased the overall pull that it had. First, let's just review. So remember, whoops, an ion is whenever an atom gains an electron or loses an electron. So they no longer have the same number of protons and electrons. Always before, before, remember the Z, or the atomic number, is the number of protons, and it was also the number of electrons because it was a neutral. However, if it loses an electron, it now has more protons than it has electrons. So it's, called, it's a positive charge, and it's called a cation. The way that I remember this is cation has a T, and the T itself kind of looks like the plus sign. Okay. Now, if a if an atom gains electrons, it now has more electrons than protons, and so now it's negatively charged. And if it's negatively charged, it's called an anion. And the way I remembered anion was anion has two ends, and negative starts with an N. Okay. So, what dictates or determines the size of an ion? And we're talking about monatomic ions. That means an ion that only um, consists of a single atom. So, for example, lithium, which has three protons and three electrons whenever it's neutral, it likes to lose one electron to where then it's got three protons, but only two electrons, so overall it's got a plus one charge. Okay? So what happens to it, to its size? That's what we're really talking about. Or what happens on the other end where fluorine, which whenever fluorine is neutral, whoops, whenever fluorine is neutral, it has nine protons and nine electrons. However, what happens is it likes to gain an electron, so then it has 10 electrons, so it becomes has a negative one charge when it's an, when it's an anion. So what happens to its charge? So, I mean, what happens to its size? So then, we're going to discuss that. Now, overall, the ionic size depends upon the nuclear charge. So what does that mean? We're talking about the number of protons that exist on the inside of the nucleus. It depends upon the number of electrons that are left, and it also depends upon the orbital that 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 the electrons that that are left behind where they reside. So, what does the n equal? The principal quantum number. So, if we look at this, if we just look at this these trends, you're going to see something. Let's first look at the cations. Cations are smaller than what the parent atom, the neutral atom, looked like. So, let's just compare lithium here. What I like about this is it gives you some numbers. Okay, here, let me do a different color. Lithium, the parent atom of lithium is done, what is that, gray? It is 1.34 angstroms. Whenever it loses that electron, let's just draw what it would look like. Okay, so here, just quickly, I'm going to go back here and draw lithium. So lithium would look something like this. Here's the, the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus itself would have, um, you know, three protons on the inside. So there are three protons. Normally... Before it loses its electrons, oops, here, let me do a different color. 
a different type of ink. There's the n equals 1, and it has, you know, 1, 2 electrons, and then it's got the n equals 2, and the n equals 2 also has 1 electron on it. It likes to lose that outermost electron, so then it's going to have an overall plus 1 charge. So let's go ahead and let's lose that outer electron. Whoops, now we have lithium, but it's a lithium plus 1 charge. Okay, it's now smaller than what it started off with. That's pretty apparent. It's lost a whole, you know, a whole uh, valence shell. So that should make sense, the whole reason why that it's, it's smaller than what you would expect. Okay, then what happens... if we look at um, anions. Anions are larger than what they started off with. So let's just look at this now. So here's the original, and was that the gray color originally? That's what oxygen looked like. When it gains two electrons, it's a lot larger. It went from 0.73 to 1.4. The reason why is as you add more electrons, they start to repulse each other. And as they start to repulse each other, they're going to want to take up more space because they want to get away from each other. They're, they're crowded, right? You know, you want your space, right? So let me show you what that means there. I'm going to attempt to draw it. I don't know how well it's going to come out, but we'll attempt to draw it. So we have oxygen's nucleus. And oxygen's nucleus has, oh, oxygen's atomic number is 8. So that means it's going to have 8 protons. 8 protons. It then has N equals 1 energy shell with 2 electrons. It has an N equals 2 electron shell. And normally it just has 6 electrons. Okay, so I'll just put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright, so then what happens is as we add, let's just add 2 more. It likes to gain 2 electrons to it. As we go in and we gain these two electrons, it becomes more crowded. So what happens is instead of it keeping the same distance away, this outer shell here is then going to want to become bigger to make up for the extra crowding. And so now it's further away. We've got the two that we've added, and then we have the original six that were there. So now it's bigger than it was whenever it started, because they're repulsing each other. Okay, so that's what that is indicating here, is as we add more electrons, so it goes from oxygen to an O2 minus charge, it doubles, well, it roughly doubles for oxygen, it gets much larger. What happens if we go, the sizes of ions, as we go down the periodic table? This should make sense. As you go down the periodic table, whether we're talking about um, the cations or the anions, they increase in size because you're increasing the principal quantum number. You're increasing the number of energy levels. And so that's the reason why here we see, if we look at the boron 3+, plus versus aluminum 3+, plus, they're bigger, versus gallium 3+, plus or indium 3+. Plus. Same thing is true with the anions. They get larger as you go down the periodic table. Now here's a new term for you. It's called an isoelectronic series. An isoelectronic series just means that it's ions that have the same number of electrons overall. So, we've been talking about lithium, how lithium likes to lose one electron. So it goes from originally having three electrons down to having just two electrons and looking like helium. Beryllium, which is next door to it on the periodic table, 
it also it likes to lose two electrons, so it goes from having four electrons overall. Oops, sorry about that. Four electrons overall to now it also has two electrons, so it's called isoelectronic. Boron likes to lose three, so it's three positive charge, and it just has it went from five down to two, so they have the same number of electrons. On the other end of the table, we have oxygen, which likes to gain two electrons, and fluorine that likes to gain one electron. So now they overall both will have eight. And oxygen went from six to eight. Fluorine went from seven to eight. So what does that ha what happens? The way because since they they're the opposite of what you think, okay? Like they, if you notice. Here, on the cation side, as you do your isoelectronic series, they get larger, because that's that, that, that pink or that red color. On the anionic side, as you gain the electrons to get the same number of electrons, they actually get smaller. So why don't we see the same trend? It all has to do, once again, with this increasing nuclear charge or the effective charge here. Okay? So, what do I mean by that? Let's just draw out the example. So, let's look up the example for... I'm just going to compare lithium to um, boron. Remember, lithium and boron. So, this is going to be the cation side. Lithium had three protons. Boron has five protons. They're roughly the same size. Um, in in for the nucleus. Whenever you know, and we had n equals one shell's got two electrons on it. N equals. Oops. One shell's got two electrons on it. N equals two shell only had one electron. N equals two shell for boron had three. So that's one of the reasons why it was a little bigger, because they repulse each other. Well, what happens is as lithium loses its outermost... It now has three protons acting on just two electrons. So these two electrons feel the effect of three protons. Whenever the same thing happens to boron, we now have five protons but only two electrons. So what that does is it actually pulls those electrons in tighter. So these electrons now are really close to that that nucleus because you got five positive protons pulling those in. Now let's see what happens on the other end of the spectrum. We have oxygen and we have fluorine's nucleus. Oxygen has a total of eight protons. Fluorine has nine protons. Okay. When, then we can go ahead and draw in. Now we have n equals one, n equals two. We've got two, one, two, three, four, five, six. N equals one, N equals two. Oxygen and fluorine is going to be a little bit bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What happens here is they're going to start adding in their electrons. Fluorine will just add in one. Oxygen is going to add in two. Okay. So now there are nine protons 
affecting these outer electrons, but there's only eight affecting these. We're still getting repulsion from these outer shell electrons in the in the oxygen anion. However, it's now got more electrons out there, so you just do not have as many protons to hold it in place, and so that's going to cause it to spread out a little bit more than fluorine, because fluorine's got an extra proton. So that's why if we go back here, you can see in this instance that we see that oxygen is going to be a little bit bigger than the fluorine because we only have eight total protons pulling on those eight outer shell electrons, but here we have nine inner protons pulling on eight electrons. So I'm hoping that that's helped explain the sizes of ions, and I will see you in class.